Hi everyone, welcome back to Game Maker Cast. It's Mickey, and in this video tutorial, we're going to be taking our simple room like this and transforming it into something that looks like this with some lighting and particles and everything like that. So let's roll the intro and get right to it. Now I have the default project here, which is something that you can find in the description. The only real thing that we care about in this project is going to be this SPR simple light cutout picture here. And all this is, is a circle that starts with pure white and then fades out. I use a sprite to do this and it's pretty simple to do. All I need to do is I pick my color white. I come over to my gradient. I choose the circle, make sure it's on no dithering. And then I will grab this corner and I just go down to that corner. And this is the sprite in question. That's how I made it, so now you know. Okay, let me close this and go back to Game Maker. I have my room here, and everything is set up in tiles, and then you can see that we have some lava stuff here. The lava stuff is on its own little um, layer, and all I'm using it for is this is the spawner, which means that particles can only spawn within this particular square and this square here so i don't have particles spawning over here or all over the room and really it's just there because i didn't want to do the math for it okay so now that we have that out of the way let's go ahead and start creating our lighting system if i run my game you should see we have a nice default room here with no lighting happening at all so i have a group underneath my objects and i just made that by saying add group once I've added my group, I'm going to create my first object and call this object lighting render. So this is going to be the object that is it's going to be used to render all my lights in the game. So I'm going to make sure I add it to my room and I'm going to add it to my instances, which is at the top here. If I go back to my object, I need a create event because we need to create a surface. And then we need a draw event because we need to draw on that surface. So how this is going to work, I'll use a sprite again. Imagine that this is our game here. What we want to do is we want to create a surface that is going to draw something dark over top of it. And then on that surface, we're going to start creating cutouts of our lights that we have in the game. And then we are going to add some color to it and motion and stuff like that. So this is how it's going to end up working. So I'm laughing because it looks like a face. Okay, so we need to create our surface first. So let's do that by creating the very first variable. So we're gonna have a variable called lighting underscore surface. Make sure we set that to minus one. The reason we're using minus one here is it's when we're dealing with surfaces, minus one is treated as a special variable in Game Maker Studio. Uh, in the draw event, this is where all the magic is going to happen. Now, when we're dealing with the surface here, surfaces are volatile. So that means that if we minimize, maximize, or perhaps maybe even move our window, there's a chance that the surface might be destroyed. So we need to check to see if that surface exists. And if it doesn't exist, then we're going to create it on the fly here. So we can do that by using a simple if statement. We could say if the surface exists, and then it looks for an ID here. So we'll pass it our lighting surface. So if it doesn't exist, then in here we need to create it. So I'll say my lighting surface equals surface underscore create with a uh, width and a height. Now in this particular case, I'm just gonna use my room underscore width and I spell it right in room underscore height. Now, one thing you may not have noticed when we were looking at the room is my room itself is very small. It's 512 by 384. And then I'm using a viewport to scale everything up to a 1024 by 768 resolution. So I'm okay by using the room width and height because it's pretty small. If I had a massive room, I would probably use the camera properties, the width and height here to only get that particular thing. So if my room was something like 1024, it would actually be much higher. I would only want to draw the surface on whatever the camera can see instead of the entire room here, because we might end up using more memory than our users have on their computer. You don't know that. 
So um, back in their workspace, once we create the surface, now we have to tell the surface that we're going to draw to it. So we could do that with a surface set target. And we're going to set the target to our lighting surface. Anytime we do a set target, we also have to reset it. So we might as well add that in here. Now, anything that we put inside here, this is going to be drawn to our lighting surface. So like I said, the first step is going to be drawing something dark over top of the surface. And we can use that by using draw clear alpha. And we're going to use a C black. So it's going to be pure black. And we're going to set the alpha to 60%. Now, even though I have this in my room, which I do right there, it's nothing's going to happen because we're not actually drawing anything. After we reset the target, we have to tell it to draw the surface. So draw surface, and we're going to pass in our lighting surface ID, which is that guy there. And then the position that I want it to start drawing at is the top left. So I'll just use zero and zero. Now, if I hit F5, we should see a darkened room here in which we do. So that's step one complete. Hey everyone, if you want this game, just type the URL in your browser and it shall be yours. Next we want to do is cut out those particular holes, especially for the coins here. So I'm going to create a new variable called object lighting and cut out. And in here, I'm going to set the sprite to that circle. I'm going to make sure that it is not visible because I don't want it showing up within the game. Now in my room, I'm going to take this lighting cutout and I'm just going to put it over a couple different points that we have here and go back to my workspace. I'm going to make sure that I bring up the render again. I'm going to maximize this and close my room. Now what I want to do after we draw everything, um, after we draw a black rectangle over our surface, I want to make, I want to go through and say, do I have any cut out lights? If I do, then I want to do something with it. So I can use the with function here and I can look for the object line out cutout. And if there isn't any lighting cutout variables in our room, it will just skip the steps. So that's very nice to know. So what we need to do is we need to set the GPU blend mode to blend mode underscore subtract because we're going to be we're going to be cutting out circles in that piece of fabric there. And what I want to do is I want to use a draw sprite, extend it, and I'm going to set it to be whatever the sprite is currently set to, which is normally going to be always this guy, the circle. If we have any animation, I want to make sure that I capture that by using the image index and then the X position and Y position of that object in our room. And then the image underscore X scale, image underscore Y scale. We have no rotation and we will use a pure white um, color here and an alpha as one. The final thing we need to do is reset that blend mode to normal, normal or else we won't see anything on our screen. Now if I hit F5, you should see that we have some cutouts happening here. Now, the reason why I'm using the image X scale and Y scale is because if I go to my room and I take one of these cutouts and I make this a lot bigger and hit a five, that's automatically gonna be accounted for it. And you can see we have this nice big circle here. So I don't have to code anything. It's all being done on the variable itself. So the next step, we need to add color into what we see here. So right now, our, we're just basically cutting holes in our surface. Now I wanna add some color in. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to open up our cutout object here. And I'm going to go to variable definitions and I'm going to add a variable for the color. I'm going to go and change the type so that it's a color and change the default to be white and make sure I drag the alpha over to 255. Uh, while I'm here, I'm going to add a new variable for intensity. And this is going to be a real value. And we're going to set it to use a range from zero to one. And let's set the intensity by default to 0 0.1. The reason why we're using this range here is it gives us the slider here. So it makes things a little more easier when we're doing things in the room editor. Now, if I go to the room editor and let's say I pick this guy here. Now, underneath the variables, I can change this information here. So I'm going to change the color 
I'm going to change it to something yellow. And the intensity, I'm going to put at 0 0.03. Down here, I'm going to change this guy, and I'm going to push him down over here by the lava. I'm going to double click and say variables. Change the color to red. Just happens to be right there. And I'm going to change the intensity to something a little more higher, so 0 0.6. Now that that's done, let's go back to our render object and let's code that in. So right here, we've cut out that particular circle. Now we have to add color in. So we're going to set our blend mode to blend mode underscore add. And we might as well take what we have here, copy and paste. Because all we're really going to be changing is we're not going to be using C white. We're going to be using whatever color we passed in. And we are also going to be using the intensity that we passed in. Now, if I hit F5, we should see a couple circles that are yellow. It's a little hard to tell on this guy. And then we have a red circle. Now, actually, let me go and load up the room here. Let's go to this guy and say variables and change the intensity to one and change that to blue just so you can see it without having to squint. Okay, so you can see that now that is 100% blue. So this looks great. The next step I want to do is kind of add a wobble effect, and this is basically the lights going in and out. So let's close this and load up the cutout again. Let's add a new variable, and let's name this variable wobble, and let's set the default to zero. It's going to be a real number, and we're going to use a range, and we're going to set it to 0 0.02, so we can't really go very high here. Now let's close this, go back to our room, and now if we say open up this guy, under the variables we have this wobble wobble variable here. I'm going to set this to 0 0.05 and I'll copy that and actually in here I'll make this one the maximum just so we can see what we're doing. Okay so now that we have that set up on these two lights, if we go back to our render when we are doing any wobbling, we have to figure out the math. It's not really math, but figure out the uh, image circle, or sorry, the size of the circle before we draw it and cut it out. So we'll use a wobble amount X and a wobble amount Y variable. So the X is going to start at whatever our image X scale is, plus a random range between the minus wobble and the plus wobble. So on one of our lights, we set the wobble to something like 0 0.05. So this would be negative 0 0.05 to 0 0.05. Let's copy this and paste it in the Y and just change it to the image Y scale. So now when we cut the image out, we have to use the wobble amount X and wobble amount Y. And then when we draw the image in with the color, we use the exact same variables there. So if I hit F5, we should see, hopefully, this one you can see much better, but you should see it going kind of in and out. So now we have that little wobble effect there. The next thing that I want to do is I want to make it so that these particles have actual lights attached to them. So right now, they are just a plain object lava particle. Uh, there's some basic movement code in here and then just fades out. Hey, if you're still watching this video, that's awesome. Um, if you want this game, type it in the URL and it's yours. So what I want to do in my render, in particular the draw event, is I want to say, instead of using with the lighting cutout, I want to look for with the lava particle. So I'm going to copy this and I'm going to paste it in down below. I'm going to change this to say object lava particle. Now there's a few things that we have to change. We don't have access to the wobble variable, we don't have access to color, and we definitely don't have access to intensity. So what we could do is we could hard code these values within this with statement, or we could create a variable up here. So let's call it the lava wobble, and let's set it to 0 0.5, and let's change all the wobbles to that. And now I'm just going to hard code the color to say C underscore orange. And instead of saying the intensity, what I want to use is the image alpha. And the reason why I'm using the image alpha on this particular sprite is because 
this particular sprite, its alpha fades out over time, and then when the alpha is zero, it gets destroyed. So if everything is right, I should hit F5, and let's see if our particles have any lights attached to them here. And you know what? I forgot one thing. If I go back to me, my render and I go to draw, we're using the sprite index. So the sprite index is going to be this lava particle guy right here. It's a three by three pixel image. So that's not going to cut it for us. In the draw event, we are going to have to specify the particular sprite. So we want SPR underscore the simple light kind of. And we could just use the first image index, which is zero, because this light cutout does not have any animation at all to it. So with that, let me give it a quick look. It looks okay. So let's head F5 and let our particles kind of start to load up here. And you can see that now we have those particles and we have lights attached to them. So hopefully this lighting system is simple enough that you can put it into your games and I can see a lot of people using it. It really makes the game a whole lot different. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.